Hi everyone and wel welcome to the eighth edition of Iberodocs, the Ibero-American Documentary Film Festival in Scotland. My name is Mar Felices, I am Iberodocs director. I am a, a white woman with short hair wearing a white t-shirt and behind me there are two posters of Iberodocs. Here on the screen with me is also Vicky Carlson who is providing visual interpretation. She is a white female with brown hair. We also have another interpreter with us providing English interpretation. The interpreting, interpreting function can be accessed via the globe symbol at the bottom of your screen. And if you are using a mobile phone with the left swipe. Select English unless uh, you want to hear the original in Spanish. All right, so now you're gonna hear me with uh, in my mother language an accent. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Iberodogs, the first documentary festival in Scotland. This is the first only an edition. I'm the director of the festival and Mari Carmen Graue, the protagonist of the documentary, is here with us. And Eusebio Cuesta, who is the director of the festival uh, in Manchester. This speech will finish at uh, 7 35 in the afternoon and you can make your questions either in English or Spanish in the Q&A section below. Thank you very much for being here with us and I give you the floor, Pedro. Thank you very much, Mara, and good evening. I'm Pedro Sebio. I'm in a living room. I'm wearing a green jacket. There's a shelf full of books behind me, which is what I like the most, books and literature. Good afternoon, Mari Carmen. How are you? Hi, how are you? Pedro, Mar. This is very exciting to be here with you today. For me, it's a great pleasure to have been included uh, with my film, Mari Carmen, in the festival. And I'm honored to be the first one in this festival. Yes, and you deserve it, especially the documentary, it's excellent. Mari Carmen, tell us, how did this idea come up? How did you uh, arrange the, the planification for uh, carrying out this documentary? Well, I got to know Sergio uh, through a friend. He was uh, his partner at that time. And we were having dinner, we were talking, and he uh, suggested to partner together. And uh, he asked me if I wanted to do a job uh, with him, a documentary, and so I agreed. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know what I was go, uh, going to do at that time. So we started to plan uh, how it was going to be, uh, how the project was going to be. So we started with the filmmaking, he followed me with my daily activities, both professional and personal. We talked a lot. So that's how it started to build uh, the screenplay. We had to go over and over it again. Uh, and finally, we he found the best screenplay to uh, to lead his ideas through it. So that's how it happened and how it ended being at the documentary. And uh, well, I don't know how to describe you, but uh, maybe not hyperactive, but polyfacetic because you are not only a music teacher, you play cello and you are also a, a a rock plant, you write and you are a marathon runner. All of this, uh, when when uh, we see your personality in the in the movie, how did you arrange it? So here and you. Well, he tried to follow me in all my daily activities. 
the ones that he thought were more is, most interesting, he recorded them. And the process took seven years because it started, well, when I was 52, 53, now I'm 58. I don't know, maybe it was six then. But yeah, he recorded everything he could. And I, in some way, tried to uh, approve or, or tell him not to add. So that was how he decided to uh, take this decision sometimes. Uh, he thought more about his artistic side. And then he asked me if I was uh, for his ideas or not. And usually I was uh, for his ideas. He's a really good person. So in those activities you do in your daily life, and which are a part of your routine, what is really well transmitted in the documentary is your your spirit of security and people from your experience, what can you tell us about the documentary? I think my life philosophy was to see what I do have and not what I don't have. And take advantage of what I do have. And if I don't see, but I can move. And, and of course, if I like what I do, because uh, maybe I, I can not like something uh, that I can do. And I think we have to pay attention to our desires and don't choose to say no. We have to consider it and say, okay, yes, I think I can do it. And suddenly you realize that, yes, I can. And uh, we, usually I can do most of the things. And, and during the film, there are some very exciting moments during the whole documentary. It's uh, very authentic and it transmits very well. It's very touching. And in one of the shots uh, in which I was more excited or uh, touched was when you had to leave the orchestra because you were not able to play anymore. You had even memorized symphonies. But of course, with the working rhythm, you couldn't uh, you couldn't cope with it. But you still kept going. How, could you describe how was that moment when you said, "Okay, I have to keep going"? I feel that many times there are some doors that shut, but other windows open. And sometimes we don't want to see those windows that open. And of course it hurts. It's painful, especially now with the pandemics. We There are many windows shut and it's been very difficult. But there are others which have opened and sometimes it's very difficult to uh, go through those windows. But when you don't have any other option, 
with finally you have to choose to get going uh, because otherwise you get stuck and finally you lose the the life you have left we have to think that someday we won't be here and uh, I don't know there is some things that we can do in the meantime and those are many things that are very uh, pleasing so I think that would be it and uh, about music yes that's what happened I couldn't read uh, the, the notes but I could play music, so uh, I, I found my way through playing in theater plays. So finally, these paths I take lead me to other paths that I can, that I can do. So I really like it, so that's it. Yes, it's the dynamics of your of yourself, of your personality. If you if you had to decide, or if you had to choose uh, the objective of the documentary or the aim, what would you like the public to remember? What you what would you like to transmit the the public? I know it's uh, not only a question for for the protagonist, but also for the director. But unfortunately, Sergio cannot uh, be here today with us. But what would you say is the aim of this documentary? Well, uh, my God. I think a very interesting topic, which uh, it's uh, discussed in the documentary, is uh, relationships between human beings. And um, and I think the the topic Sergio chose to to discuss which uh, was to include my mother in the documentary. And I feel it gave a very important approach for uh, when it comes to communication. When we establish relationships, you don't say some things because you take for granted that they are in some way or in another and you don't listen to the other's version of of the of the situation and that's what happened to my mom and me during the whole time that uh, we have uh, had our relationship so this film transformed us. I watched his version, she watched mine, and that was very surprising. And uh, it was very important for me when the film finished uh, to see my mom's side of the study that I had never heard and that she realized about mine. So from the beginning, it was a teamwork or you had your version and then your mom gave hers. And in the end, you could see how each other uh, saw that reality. Yes, uh, that was a surprise for both of us. Uh, at the beginning, it was going to be a documentary for my life, but uh, Sergio did my mom. And then he realized that uh, that was the missing part of the documentary to have a sense, a full sense. So she, he was recording her for a while and also he was recording me. And then one day he uh, seated both together and showed us the results because I, I had not seen it before and it was very shocking and moving and we saw what each of us had recorded. We cried, we said uh, that we were sorry, we hugged. And I think it was very useful for me when my mom 
uh, was there saying all those things and also for her when I was saying all those things about her. So now we have a very beautiful relationship. So when you were shooting the film, each of you talked about the different uh, moments of your life without knowing that the other was also, maybe not in the same moment, but was also talking about those moments uh, that were so important when you go to USA to have the surgery and all that. And, and you didn't know it, right? Exactly, that was it. Each of us was talking about the same topic. And finally, uh, both stories came together. And I think, in my opinion, and maybe my, my part that uh, I talked about doing things and willing to do them and keep going, maybe it was important uh, when when it comes to, to showing this. And also your father's figure, uh, who was the one who led you to the mu music path. He insisted in uh, you uh, going into the music world. Yes, exactly. And that was very important for me. He never pressured me to do so, but uh, he led you to the way, isn't it? Yes, exactly. He showed me the way and I liked it. And that was very important. He led you through a way, uh, the same way that you are leading your uh, pupils now. When, when you to talk to children and you tell them that your eyes are in your ears and children, when you start playing, they say that they can visualize in the water uh, with this one lake. It's a very wonderful image. And to end with uh, Mari Carmen, at, in these hard times we are living now and uh, that you uh, usually teach music, you also found your way, didn't you? Yes, yes, I feel I did. I think uh, I we can always find a way. And... Uh, with the senses, with intuition, we can see, and uh, you have to follow those. And uh, it was also very difficult for me, and I had to work a lot. And uh, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to present this documentary and to be here. And I hope the public can enjoy it as well as enjoying the festival. Thank you very much. The honor is ours for Instituto Cervantes Iberodox. The documentary, it's excellent. And you're a role model. And I thank you and I give you a hat from here, from Manchester. Yes, same for you. Thank you very much, Mari Carmen. I wanted to take advantage uh, for this situation to give a little surprise. Hi, teacher. Hi, Marisol. It's so nice to see you, and thank you so much for sharing your information, uh, your history with us. It was very touching, especially at these times. So, you, I really admire you, teacher. Yes, I'm here for you. Thank you. I have to go someday to Edinburgh to give you a hug. Yes, I hope it will be soon. Well, uh, maybe you don't know this story, but uh, the documentary came to Edinburgh thanks to Marisol, who works in Iberodox for a very long time. She's been a pupil of Mari Carmen, and thanks to her, 
now a uh, documentary came to our ears and we could introduce it as the opening film for this edition and have Mari Carmen with us today. And for those who didn't watch it yet, Mari Carmen, the documentary, you can watch it until the 21st of April at 6 in the afternoon. And tomorrow we'll be here at 7.30 with Martin Weber F with his film. So thank you very much and see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.